Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Uh, thanks so much for stopping by first and foremost. Um, so today I'm going to start a brand new series on this channel that I've been wanting to start for a long time. Several years ago I even started a whole other channel just to dedicate it to what I'm about to talk about today. But it's very difficult to try and keep up several different channels. So I decided this year when I revamped the channel to include this as one of the things that I would be covering. So I'm very excited. Uh, so the series. Uh, the series is going to revolve around marching percussion. In other words, uh, marching snare, marching tenor, and marching uh, basses. Mostly marching snare because number one, that's where I am the most versed in. And number two, I think that a lot of the snare line fundamentals are very applicable to tenor and bass down the line. So that's not to say that there's not gonna be any bass um, instructional videos or any tenor instructional videos that's not to say that I'll, I'll drop in a few here and there and talk about tenor specific things and bass specific things but it's mostly going to revolve around the snare technique and snare playing mostly so before we go on i kind of want to talk a little bit about myself so you know where the information that i'm giving you is is coming from kind of want you to see what i've done where i've taught things of that nature so you can really understand where my information is coming from so i started playing snare when i was a sophomore in high school that's when i first made the snare line and i played through the next three years so sophomore junior and senior year i've played on the snare line culminating my senior year becoming center snare becoming section leader of the drum line i'm very happy to say that i was part of the first uh scholastic awgi group in my city we were able to go to the denver regional and uh we actually took first place which was really great really exciting we really didn't expect that and we were invited to dayton ohio to compete at the national level which was also a ton of fun. I wouldn't trade that experience for the world. It was something amazing that I got to experience. So after high school, I graduated. My instructor asked me if I wanted a teaching gig because there was a school I didn't have a percussion instructor at all. So uh, right out of high school, right off the bat, I went over to help the band directors at another school for a year. And then I returned uh, to my alma mater to teach there. So I taught for several years at my alma mater, which is a, a small school in my city called Beller High School. I taught there for about seven years, and I'm very, very proud to say that the last two state eligible years that I was there, we were able to advance to the state marching band competition. It's a really great feeling knowing that you were able to put together a drum line that is capable of competing at the state level, especially in a state as competitive as Texas when it comes to the marching arts. Oh, I've seen some of those guys and they're just, you know, ridiculous. Uh, so props to East Texas especially because those guys are insane. So we attended the state marching band competition in 2015 and 2017. And uh, I'm sure one or two of uh, my students that were in those lines, I'm sure are watching this. If you guys are watching this right now, thank you so much for two great uh, years, two great drum lines, especially the 17 drum line, which overcame a lot of stuff. So uh, props to you guys. Thank you so much. You guys did a phenomenal job. Uh, I did study at the university level for some time. I studied general percussion and of course I did the drum line while I was there. And I'm happy to say that I was able to be the center snare at the university for a year before I stopped and I uh, switched back to um, my original degree plan. Uh, I also had the privilege of teaching the inaugural WGAZ group out at uh, Chapin High School, also here locally. There was really nobody here doing the WGAZ circuit until Chapin jumped on board and I was very lucky to be a part of that inaugural year and now they're doing great things in a whole other division. I wasn't able to do it this year, but they jumped out of the Scholastic A division and were uh, competing independently. It was no longer known as Chapin Percussion Ensemble. It became, uh, I think, the Sun City Sound. I'm not too sure. I could be wrong, but I'm very happy to have uh, jump-started that a few years ago. So basically a lot of my experience comes from teaching. So I'm extremely proud of all that I've been able to give back uh, to students and I really wanted to be able to, you know, spread knowledge, not just locally here in my city, but I want to be able to spread it uh, all over the place. And that's what this series is basically meant for. So it's basically going to revolve around uh, snare technique slash techniques uh, with, with some uh, bass and tenor stuff. So uh, today is not going to be too involved in the instructional part but it basically i want i wanted to get started with something very simple and uh before i jump into you know harder stuff and things of that nature so i don't want it to be a very long video so i'm definitely starting from the very bottom so even beginners 
uh, people that have never touched a stick know exactly what I'm talking about and, and they can learn how to, how to play from the very bottom. So the first thing I, I want to talk about in, in this video is, is how to properly hold a stick. If you're playing snare, if you're playing traditional grip, how to properly play it. Uh, if you're playing match grip, it's just the right hand, whatever. I'm going to show you with the right hand. Uh, you just apply it to the left hand. So we'll start with the right hand. So I, I kind of want to talk about first the, the, the marching stick. Uh, don't be confused when you're buying your first pair of sticks. A marching stick is is different than a regular concert stick. It's, it's a lot thicker. It's a lot fatter. I personally use the Scott Johnson Signature Series from Promark. I like the weight. I like the sound of them better than pretty much anything else I've used. Uh, Ralph Hardiman is also really good. And right now, these right here are the Harvey Thompson and Ralph Nader BYOS sticks uh, by Promark. I got them just because I was curious, and they're actually not bad sticks. Still prefer the Scott Johnsons, but you know. So first things first, uh, how to hold the stick. So this thing actually has some engineering background to it, you know, that they were designed to work a certain way. So the way that this stick was designed, the optimal pivot point uh, where you're going to get the most response out of the stick is a third of the way up the stick, which is about right here. Uh, so keep that in mind. A third of the way up the stick is very important. So we'll start with the fulcrum. So what's a fulcrum? A fulcrum is actually the pivot point in your grip. That's that's a fulcrum uh, is the pivot point. So if those of you guys that were lucky enough to see a seesaw, uh, the fulcrum is actually the point in the center right here. Um, where the seesaw pivots back and forth. That is actually the fulcrum. Uh, so in, in drumming, we also have a fulcrum. The fulcrum is where we uh, grab the stick where it actually pivots. That is called the fulcrum. So first things first, remember we talked about a third of the way up the stick. So you take your thumb and your index finger, okay, and you're going to grip it like this when you grab the stick, okay. Um, so you're going to put the thumb along the stick, okay, you see that right here, along the stick, and then you wrap the index finger right around right there a third of the way up the stick you see that that is the first step to the right hand grip uh, it may be different for you and your school but everywhere that i've ever seen this is how the, the the fulcrum works there is no space right here the thumb follows the stick and then the index finger wraps around like so a uh, third of the way up the stick uh, at least that's the general consensus, a third of the way up the stick. I actually learned that in a book by Jeff Queen. So that right here is a third of the way up the stick. Now, my grip follows the uh, the, the lines in my hand, uh, typically, right here. So you get this sticking out right here. So I typically like to just grab the fingertips and wrap around right here. You just wrap this around uh, the stick. Make sure that you're getting as much of your skin to touch the stick as possible you don't want to be loose like this okay that's a no-no uh, you want to keep the stick nice and close to uh, you want to get as much of your fingers around the stick as you possibly can of course so that, that it can uh, not tightly though of course because you need to be able to have it the stick breathe when you play and all that good stuff right okay uh, that's the right hand now let's talk about the left hand real quick which is a little bit more complicated much more awkward than than the right hand the left because it's not something you usually do you know this is pretty natural uh this grip is pretty natural in the right hand you know and of course if you've been doing things in music since you were a kid you've done concert band and you kind of already held it but the left hand the first thing i want you to do is i want you to hold up your hand like if you're going to shake somebody's hand okay see that right here okay just like that so after you've done that i want you to take a stick any stick doesn't matter which one it is the left stick the right stick whatever don't worry about the right hand for now uh, and i want you to put Remember we talked about a third of the way up the stick? I want you to put that third right in the web um, of uh, in between your thumb and index finger. Okay, that's exactly where I want you to put uh, that stick. A third right in the web. You guys see that? Okay, that's what I want. And keep your hand like if you're shaking somebody's hand, okay? That's the number one step. That's the most important step in the left hand traditional grip. Uh, number two, the second thing that I want you to do is uh, make sure that you're, you're uh, well first things first, go ahead and put that ring finger right underneath uh, the stick to hold it up, okay? See that right there? Okay, this is what I'm doing right here. Just holding up the stick, that's it. Okay, that's it, the it's still inside the web of my fingers. That's number one, just to, for support. Number two is take that pinky and support that ring guy, okay, that ring guy. Um, I didn't mention this, but make sure that when you rest the, the stick, it's right on the cuticle of your ring finger. You see that right there? Okay, that's where you want it, okay? So that's step number two. Support, the pinky is there to support the ring finger. They're almost gonna be like uh, brothers. They're never gonna leave each other's side. 
uh, they do everything together. Okay, so that's step number two. Step, uh, you know, these are just my personal steps, kind of my checklist that I go through. Uh, number two is you're gonna take your ring finger. Okay, right now it's like this, nice and open. You're not really doing anything with it. Okay, uh, step number two is you're gonna take this ring finger. You're gonna place it over the stick and then lay your thumb on top of that index finger. See that? Okay, you are going to get a, a cross-like uh, figure right here between your thumb and your index finger. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, um, you are going to get that and your thumb goes on the bridge right here of your index finger. So, yeah, sorry. It just, it's natural. It happens. Well, I actually had a, an instructor that told me to flip them off and then just put the stick in. And that's how he learned how to hold the left hand traditional grip so yeah that's step number three for me okay so you remember you got the curved um ring and pinky uh and then you got this cross thing over here the last thing that you want to do is put this middle finger right on top just kind of plops right on there if you notice okay if you see that my ring finger and my middle finger are in line okay and that's kind of what you want in the traditional grip cool you guys see that and uh, that's the left hand grip I'm gonna show you guys one more time just to kind of see what is going on in my left hand here okay we'll talk about placement and all that uh, just a little bit be very relaxed when you have these sticks in hand cool so that's it for this video just a quick introduction to me and to uh, snare grip Thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate anybody that stopped by. And uh, if you learned something, don't forget to hit that like button down below. So I know that you're kind of getting what I'm beaming to you. Also, if you have any questions uh, about the grip or about anything about me or whatever, whatever you have, uh, make sure to post your comments down below and I'll try to answer them as many as I can. And of course, if it's a popular issue or something like that or something I need to address, I'll definitely address it in the next video so you guys can get a better uh, understanding of what the answer to your question would be. And that's pretty much it. There's plenty more on the channel if you're interested. Don't be afraid to poke around and uh, I'll try to upload these lessons as much as I possibly can. Maybe I'll get a schedule going just so you know exactly when the next um, lesson will be out. So uh, again, thanks so much for watching and uh, we'll see you guys next time. See ya.